Buzz Nation, what's going on, y'all? Hope you guys are having a great day. Hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed that song. I'm gonna try and do it a little bit more on my live streams as I'm like getting ready to go. But shout out to my good friend Josh Bonet. He made me, I guess you would call it the David Talks Buffs theme song. Uh, reach out to him for all, all custom work. He's got song placements on all sorts of movies, live TV, sports, all that. So um, really thankful to him, as well as Martez from Yo Martez. Sco Buffs, 10% off. Use that promo code. Link's in the description as well. Don't always start with the housekeeping, but wanted to today. So threw on the Bishop Thomas jersey. And what's up, everybody in the chat? Like, appreciate y'all. But I thought today we got, I believe we, we have a visiting interior defensive lineman coming here. Visiting here from Houston, Chidozi Nwankwo. And I wanted to just give you guys a little preview or a little bit of an idea of kind of what he could bring to the table. Um, I went through last night. Y'all know that I have some All-22 film. I don't have any on 2023 yet, but I uh, was able to find a game that Ch um Chidozi played against Tulane in 2022 against some big time offensive linemen at Tulane. And so I thought that we could go through that here in a minute, take a look at that. But let's go ahead again. I got this pro football focus now and I'm trying to use more of this. You guys have found it really insightful. Again, um, pro football focus should not be viewed as like the end all be all for judging if a player can play or not, but it's part of the picture. It gives you somewhat of an idea of what they're doing on an individual basis. Chidozi Nwankwo, okay? Interior defender, 5'11", 295 pounds, okay? That is lighter than some of the other guys that we've had. Um, but again, some of you guys have brought this up. Hey, there are guys like Aaron Donald that aren't 300 pounds. Are they more the exception to the rule? Sure, absolutely. Chidozi might be one of those exceptions at the college football level. Um, I mean, substantially graded better than any interior guys that we had right now. Um, I think Shane Cox might have been one of our best interior guys. And I, I, I don't, I'm not going to say, I, I can't remember what he graded out as, but he wasn't anywhere close to 164th out of 882 defensive linemen. Grade here, 74.1. Okay. Pass rush grade isn't great, but again, as the interior defensive line um main responsibility is closing up those gaps giving the <clears throat> the linebackers those edge guys room to run their stunts to get up the middle to get after the quarterback or to stop the running back all of that but graded out very well 78.2 this past year and remember this isn't aac anymore this is big 12 competition for chidozi over at university of houston this past year okay so uh, graded out uh, very, very well. He would be a substantial upgrade for us. Um, if he were to come in and commit, he's a right now you pencil him in as starter, in my opinion. So um, let me go ahead and bring up his stats too before we dive into taking a little bit of a look at the film. Um, again, coming over here from Texas, again, 13 solo. Tackles one sack. That's not it. Again, when you're playing interior line, you're not going to have a ton of ton of tackles. Okay. 16 solo, 19 assists, 35 total. Had a sack. Again, great. Very well against the run. And guys, you know that's what we need big time help with. Okay. So let me go ahead and pull up these highlights. We can and I like time stamped a bunch. So guys, this might be like a like a 10 minute thing here because I went through last night. This was a 30 minute video. And I yeah, I probably marked down somewhere between 10 and 15 plays. So give you a good look, a good idea of who this guy is and what he can bring to the table. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Come on now. Where are we? All right. Y'all see this okay? I might need to restart it. Refresh. Sorry, y'all. Where are we going here? But yeah, y'all let me know. Who do you hope commits today or this weekend? I mean, we got like 10 guys visiting and... I th think we've been shooting about 90%, you know, the guys that visit. Yeah, beautiful weekend to visit. Lex just said that. I mean, it must be, what, 50s, 60s today? And, uh, I mean, not a cloud in the sky. Come on now. This thing is not loading. Give me one second, guys. Hope you all like the song, too. I like that Josh included that little bit where I said, I won $500. All right. We'll move the quality up on here. And we'll start at timestamp 152. All right. Looks great. Thanks for your patience, y'all. And sometimes when I film these things live, it's it's always a work in progress. All right, situation. We got first and 10. Ball on the 30-yard line for Tulane. And let's go ahead and show this right here. Okay, you, you will see number 10, Chidozi. Lining up inside a lot. Most of the time, he's going after, going against some of their best offensive linemen. Um, their, what's his name? Is it Preston Price? Their left guard, big time, big time player. He is 335 pounds. Their center, um, Hainsworth, is also above 310, I believe. So he's going up against big guys that, hey, in the case of Price, their left guard, number 76. He is 40 pounds heavier than this gentleman, okay? See him lining up right there. Takes the snap. And look how he tracks this guy down. Again, he wasn't able to make the tackle, but it just shows you kind of his motor, his ability to go from one spot of the field all the way to the opposite side of the field. I mean, look how big this guy is. Again, 335 pounds, okay? Like to see that motor. He could have easily given up on the play. All right. Now we're going to go to 614. All right, we got Chidozi again. Right over here. And remember, he's going after, going against a 335-pound guy. Decent little bull rush right there. And gets his hand up there at the end. Let's go to 928. We'll see some run defense, okay? Again, here he is, lining up inside. Taking on a double team. Almost gets around there. But yeah, I can't see the comments right now, guys. I'll get to them here in a bit. But y'all let me know what you think. Again, being able to fight through. Let me know what you're seeing, the things you can work on, the things that you like. 
we'll go right next uh, to this next play, I believe. Nine, no, go to 14.05. Here he is again. Double teamed. Look, fights through. Minimal gain. Well, it should have been minimal gain. But that running back is at that first hole. Has to continue to bounce it out outside. And that's what we're talking about, guys, in terms of what makes an effective interior defensive lineman. Are they clogging up the holes to allow their linebackers, the other defenders, to go and make the tackle, to go and stop the play? Are they eating space? The fact that this guy is 5'11 and 295 pounds and eating some space against these guys that are a lot bigger than him, that's impressive to me. All right, we'll go, actually, we'll go to this next play, 1437. Second and seven. Lining up right over here. Again, just eating space in there for the tackle. Eating space. Running back had nowhere to go. Now we'll go to the 16 minute mark here. We've got a third and one here. Lining up inside again. <laughs> and he's able to bounce that outside. But again, take a look at what he's just doing on an individual play basis. He's not being moved off the line. Look. He holds his ground. I like to see that. All right, what else we got here? 1736, 1738, all right. As fan of Fetty Watt, okay. And just eating space. Great, I mean, just this is a great play by the defense right, right above Hainsworth. And he's able to just find that space right in between Hainsworth and Price to create havoc. Nothing's able to open up. And that's when you have these guys come in here and make those tackles. I love it. All right, let's see what else we got here. 1847. Right, right here. More help in the run defense. And holding his ground. And the fact that he held his ground right there allows him to help get that wrap up. Again, he's a he's a very strong player. Again, being double teamed quite often. But look how he throws Hainsworth off. And he allows himself to still stay upright enough, even with Price on his back, to stick his nose in there and help get that tackle. I mean, this is one of my favorite plays that I saw him make when I was going over this last night. 
plays bigger than his size. Look, throws, <laughs> throws Hainsworth down, sticks his nose in there, gets that tackle. Gang guy. These are guys substantially bigger than he is. He's given up 40 pounds to that left guard. All right, let's see what else we got. Uh, this next play, we can run this. I think he's another double team on this. And inside, lined up directly over Hainsworth, the center. This play ended up going away, but again, look how he fights through this double team and stands his ground. He's able to get up off his feet too. And guys, you know, I'll say this all the time. You know, I'm, a, I'm an amateur when it comes to looking at film, looking at tape, stuff like that. But I'm just trying to point out to you guys the different things that I notice, trying to highlight the positives of what I think this player can can bring if he were to come here to see you. Uh, let's see what we got. 19. Let's see. Let's see a little bit of pass rush work. 23-54. Again, lined up over the center. Well, bull rush. This should be another run play, I think. Got him lined up a little bit more outside than we normally see him. Going up against that right tackle. He's able to get himself in there and help him bring him down. Gets his arm out there. Whoops. Eating space, allowing that linebacker to come up and make that play. See, number three had a clear shot because he held his ground. Right here. Held his ground, allowed him to get into the hole, make that tackle. Love that. All right, just got a couple more for you. 25, 55. Oh, it's this next play. Third and eight. Let's see some pass rush work, okay? Lined up over the right guard. <laughs> Little swim move there. Again, just disrupts that pocket. He's not hitting there or hitting the quarterback in there, but he's at least disrupting it. All right, and then the last one, one more look at him taking on a double team at the 29-minute mark. And right here, going up against their two biggest guys, okay? Remember, this guy's 335 pounds. This guy's – he's 295. I mean, you can tell he's so much smaller. Oh, that wasn't the right play. Maybe I went a little – went a little early. Sorry, y'all. Lined up over the center. There is taking on another double team. And look, eating space. Eating 
space, allowing these linebackers, these secondary players to come up and make the tackle. Now, this goes longer than what you, you know, this play goes for longer yardage than what you'd like. But again, he did his job. Missed tackle right there. But he did his job here, man. He absolutely did. Lined up over the right guard. My bad. Look, just eats space. He's got one arm on each guy. Trying to shed it. But again, 25's got to come up there and make that tackle. Same with five. But again, he did his job. So, again, this is a guy ranked in the top 30, I believe, on Pro Football Focus in terms of interior defensive linemen, interior defenders. He would be a substantial upgrade over everything that we've had at CU this past year. Um, let me go ahead. And pull up before I get to your comments, I'll pull up the the pro football focus of just to compare, like <laughs> to compare where uh where CU's been at, you know, this past year in terms of our interior grades. Um <laughs> obviously they were you know they weren't very good. But we're still in the in the place where the guys that we're bringing in, just like the guys that we brought in last year at most positions, they're going to be upgrades over what we had in 2022, right? Interior defenders, man. Devondre Sweat, man. That guy is just, he's a beast. I wish we had him. Number one ranked interior defender, obviously. He'll be going in the first round of the NFL draft, no doubt. Okay. Hey, shout out to School of Mines playing Harding University in the Division II National Championship. School of Mines right out here in Golden. Um, that's a big deal. And uh, both of my sisters actually went to Harding University in Arkansas. So I have a vested interest in both of them. All right. Yeah, so Amari McNeil was our best-ranked interior defender this past year, ranked 473. Shane Cox was 536, Leonard Payne 574, um, and Chaz Wallace 794. So we're getting a guy that's in the top 130, to put that in perspective, okay? Um, if if he commits, rather, okay? He, he would be substantial for us. So... Um, Anyways, guys, thank you so much um, for joining me. I'll take some of your questions. And if y'all want to ensure I see anything from y'all, feel free to send a super chat. But um, yeah, let me know. What what are your thoughts on um, Chidozi, Nwankwo? Again, ranked, or not 130th, my bad. He was ranked 165th, okay? Ranked in the top 120 against the run. But nonetheless, big time, big time upgrade over what we've had. So I hope we're able to convince him to come here. Um, he would definitely improve, improve the defense. Yo, <laughs> Yo, Creo, I believe you are focusing on the wrong player. We need all the four-star Oklahoma offensive and defensive linemen. We need all four stars from Texas A&M and the two cornerbacks from Georgia. Hey, I'm with you there, right? I'm with you there, but we don't got any of those guys coming in for a visit this weekend. <laughs> That's why I did this video, because he is visiting. Um, he is on the visiting list. He is here today, and so we have a better shot right now of him coming here than than some of these other guys from Oklahoma that have entered the portal. Don't get me wrong, yo, Crail. I'm right there with you. We need SEC guys coming out here. We absolutely need it, um, but they're not on the visit list right now, sadly. We're going to win the national championship next season ASAP. Man, that would be amazing. I can tell you guys that, um, <laughs> you know, Coach Prime, this team, the staff, my expectations, whatever, theirs is exponentially higher. So, yeah, I, I believe that their expectations, national championship or bust. Cecile saying we need linebackers. Yes, yes. We need all the front seven guys that we can get, but 
if we have some guys up front in the interior line that can eat that space, that can hold their ground, um, that don't get pushed off the line, our linebackers are going to look better. Um, I'm not saying that they're amazing, okay? But I am going to say they will look better if they have the opportunity to go and get that tackle for a loss. They have a clear path to the running back, right? Um, it's it's an ecosystem, okay? Everything is connected. But we got to we gotta get more trench guys. We will bring in more linebackers. Um, I'm confident about that. You know, the, the fact that we're – we're recruiting all of our positions of weakness, you know, offensive line. We're focusing on that this past week. Got some defensive guys in here now on the visits list. <laughs> there wasn't any like inside linebackers here. <laughs> I don't like that, but this thing's going to happen in stages. We're going to see some guys from the portal commit here right now. We're going to get more in the bowl season. After the bowl season, more, tr- more guys will enter the portal. And, um, you know, again, there are some guys from the high school ranks that we could make a run at, right? And there are still some inside guys here that I'm still very interested in to see what they can do. Is somebody like, um, is it Victory Johnson from Southern California out here? Um, I mean, he's a 6'4", 240 guy, if I remember correctly, or 250 inside linebacker. A guy coming out here from Oklahoma as part of last year's class, Morgan Pearson. He played wide receiver and linebacker. He's got great speed. So will these guys develop? That's that's a big question. Demoy Kennedy. I'm I'm still high on Demoy, okay? Um, but we do need, like I've said, linebacker, just like all these other positions, we got to continue to bring in better guys, to bring in depth, to bring in competition. We have to build those layers at every position. But I think, Cecile, um, it's harder for linebackers to make up for inferior defensive linemen. Um, I think that's what I'm trying to say. Just like a running back who we saw this past year, like, it doesn't matter how good your running back is if the offensive line can't block for run play, right? Um, look at the defensive line as kind of playing that role for the linebackers in a sense, okay? In a sense. Um, they need to hold ground. They need to not just get pushed over. Um they need to hold their spots. I mean, you just saw what Chidozi was doing, um, holding those double teams, standing his ground. Um, you know, those are two NFL caliber linemen, that left guard and that center that he was going after, uh, going up against. And I, I think he did a pretty good job. <laughs> Baby girl. David, I'm asking you politely to sing the fight song for us before you close this live. <laughs> I just might do it. I just might do it. Well, that uh, <laughs> I'm starring that one. We'll see if I remember. Yeah, Zulu's saying, yeah, get those big DT uh, uh, DTs in here. The linebackers will be better. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. What's up, Rawhide? Hope you're having a great day. But, yeah, that's why I threw on the Bishop Thomas jersey, y'all, because, you know, defensive linemen, interior guys, right? We need some upgrades there. So I wanted to throw it on here. Um, Do we have scholarships available for these players? Uh, I'm sure we do. I don't know the exact scholarship numbers right now. But uh, I would imagine there will be more players that jump in the portal. You know, that's going to happen, just like other teams are still going to have guys jump in the portal. So we're still going to get some more turnover with this roster. Don't stress it. Um, at least that's what I would assume. So we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Nine scholarships left right now. Yeah, we're going to get more. <laughs> Man, y'all are freaking cracking me up. Okay. I, I know I don't talk about the fight song at all, but or much, but we were talking about it in Rawhide's show yesterday. And, I, you know, I'm just going to say this, guys. Like, the fight song has no impact on wins and losses. It has no impact on it. Let me just say, the fight song is not why we lost games this past year. And that is the dumbest take ever if you see anybody saying that it cost us wins. That's absolutely not true. But, but it's just a fight song. 
It's a thing that takes 30 seconds to sing. It's just, we've done it. Can we just keep doing it? And hey, we don't have to sing it all the time, right? <laughs> I I just don't understand. I just I just don't understand what the big deal is about the fight song. Just don't understand it. It's just part of who CU is. Just like Ralphie. Just like Peggy and Betty. Um <clears throat> Let's see, Top Shada. Good to see you, man. Thanks for the kind words. Um, do you think we should have an open competition at quarterback if the Vandy quarterback commits? I think two is too comfortable because he is the only option. What? Two is too comfortable. I, I, I mean, he's he's a projected first round draft pick. Uh, I mean, none of these guys that we bring in are going to compete uh, with Shador. Uh, uh, no way. <laughs> But we should be having a, uh, a competition for the backup, absolutely. Um, again, I would love Ryan Staub to stay here. But I want Ryan Staub to have some competition. Bring in the guy from uh, Vanderbilt, that 6'7 guy. Bring in, you know, we're bringing in uh, Destin Wade, 6'3", four-star recruit from Kentucky. Again, guys, he's a lot better than just what um, his one game shows. Go on Rawhide Show. RJ can explain to you as a Kentucky guy. What went wrong in, for him in that bowl game? Dude found out like three days prior that he was starting that with all of his weapons gone to the NFL. New coach, all that. So <clears throat> all I'm going to say is, you know, just like at wide receiver, we're continuing to bring in dogs. We're continuing to bring in more competition on the offensive line. We need to be doing that for backup quarterback. Um, again, I like Ryan Staub, but like I don't get some of y'all that are already anointing him as you want him to be the starter after Shador is gone. This guy hasn't even won us a football game. And like y'all are treating him, <laughs> y'all are treating him like he's some anointed guy. Like, no, he's a 6'1 quarterback that could be starting, I think, right now at the G5 level. Okay. But if Ryan Staub is our plan A after Shador is gone, or if Destin Wade, or any of these guys are our plan A right now after Shador is gone, that's a big issue, okay? I view all this right now as backup. And if these if these guys improve to where they're a bridge guy, that's okay. But I like my quarterbacks 6'3 and taller. I'm sorry, okay? But, um, you know, competition for Shador, uh, no. <laughs> sorry, man. I just had to give you my opinion right there. Hope I wasn't too harsh. But, uh, you know, Shador is him. Any guy that we would bring in isn't, isn't realistically going to challenge him for the job. Mike Lockhart just committed to SMU. He was on a visit this weekend. Dang. Hey, well, SMU's got that oil money. Um, bummer, man. Well, hopefully this means that we can um, – you guys are cracking me up. Hopefully that means we can get Chidozi, right? Right? Um, hey, but good get for SMU. Uh, again, Mike Lockhart, are the, all these guys that we brought in um, for, for visits this weekend at the defensive line position, they're better than all the guys that we got, <laughs> okay? That's how I see it. Oh, gosh. You are wrong again. We should be playing our backups with our non-conference teams. Look what happened to SMU at FSU. We need Staub to hit the portal if the pine trees commit. What? You are wrong again. We should be playing our backups with our non-conference teams. Dude, we barely beat Colorado State with our starters last year. We should be playing our starters next year unless it's a blowout. Um, we do face North Dakota state, which it, I mean, I guess the last FCS opponent we've had was Northern Colorado a little bit ago. Um, so that could be a blowout where a lot of our backups get in, but this past year wasn't really a year for our backups to play against TCU, Nebraska, and Colorado state. I don't really, I don't really get it. Um, but to your point, yo, Creo, 
we need we need to be playing better to where we can get some of these guys in at the end of games or in the second half, like Texas was doing this past year. Okay. Um, but <laughs> you know, I, I I don't think the reason FSU didn't make the college football playoff was because they weren't giving their third string quarterback more reps during the season. Fair question. If you go to a program like Alabama, there's going to be a quarterback competition. Uh, yeah, that's totally true. And there was more of a competition, I think, this past year with Milrow than there was in the past. I mean, did you think – I mean, yes, they're bringing in guys to compete, but uh, we didn't enter the 2022 season with people talking about, well, will uh, Bryce Young hold on to his job? Same with Ohio State, right? You know. <laughs> Yeah, um, why am I forgetting his name? This Vanderbilt quarterback, dude's exciting though, man. Um, with the little bit that I saw from Bird's Eye View, I mean the guy can, the guy can play. Let's see, I think I took a screenshot of him somewhere. Do y'all see that um, that that offensive lineman from Alabama in the portal? Walter Taylor, there he is, six seven, two thirty five. Um, I think he's a run for first quarterback right now, but taking a look, I watched his junior and senior tape on huddle and really seemed to improve his throwing motion um, in one off season. I think he can still kind of tighten that thing up lefty, which is interesting. And yeah, he would be another guy that again, I would just want to bring in more competition. Okay. And I just like my quarterbacks bigger to see over the line. That way they don't need to be doing what Drew Brees or Russell Wilson do in the pocket. It's just harder for these shorter guys to be successful. That's just how I see it, man. Um, people like Caleb Williams and, you know, Bryce Young, even though he kind of looks like a bust right now. Um, Kyler Murray. Yeah. Yeah. Drew Brees. These kinds of, these guys are kind of the exception. Oh man, that Bama O line went back to <laughs> Bama. <laughs> hey man, if you got if you got a nice little raise, good for him. It's a business at the end of the day. Oh man, y'all y'all crack me up. Um, but let me take a look at the visit list again here and give y'all just another take on some of these guys before I go. Who we got? Uh, Chris McClellan. Interior guy, 320 pounds from Florida. Man, if we compare him with somebody like Nwankwo, that would be pretty cool, right? Okay. Mike Lockhart, done, off the list. Quincy Wiggins, uh, he didn't get – I think he was just kind of more of a rotational player, part-time player at LSU this past year. Defensive end, edge guy, but graded out pretty well um, in the time that he got. Preston Hodge is another guy that I really hope commits. Um, he's a guy that you'll see him listed as safety on some websites, cornerback on others. He's a slot corner, guys. He played like 80% of his snaps at slot corner this past year, okay? Chris Brazell, 6'5 wide receiver at, uh, out of Tulane. Cordell Russell, 6'4 wide receiver out of um, TCU. And then, yeah, we got Walter Taylor here on this visit. So, man, um, it, it's going to be exciting stuff, man, to see who, who else we get. Um, <laughs> man, I can't, I can't believe we're fighting about a backup quarterback right now. We're like, yeah, you know, like y'all even care that much. <laughs> now, do we move Walter Taylor to tight end at six, seven, 240 pounds or whatever he is? Um, you know, but again, guys, like as Broncos fans, you know, with, you know, I, 
before this year, I mean, the quarterback position since Peyton Manning left has just been rough. And it's like the backup quarterback is always just the darling of the team. Right. I remember when everybody was, uh, was just begging Chad Kelly to get onto the field. People were just begging for uh, Drew Locke to get in there over Teddy Bridgewater. At the end of the day, all these guys, all those guys were just mid, right? So, <laughs> like again, I don't care what the name on the back of the jersey is. I just want the backup quarterback to be better than what we had this year. It was not good quarterback play, guys. Okay. Now, did Ryan Staub look better? against Utah with a full week of prep then he looked against Washington State yes but guys we still lost we still lost the game Dave how do you feel about Walter Nolan man I would love him here I would absolutely love him here yes 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 um I don't really know where we stand with him though We got to look at a life after Shador, yes. But I, again, I think when Shador is gone, we're either going to have a five-star freshman quarterback in here with a bridge guy, or we're going to be bringing in somebody that's transferring for another year or two like Cam Ward. That's how I see it. None of these guys being brought in right now or that are backups right now should be plan A. If they are plan A, <laughs> then um, – you know, I thought way more highly of this staff. But again, guys, uh, the staff knows what they're doing. With the other guys that they're bringing in here, uh, you know that none of those guys are plan A. David, just curious, what was recruiting like before Coach Bryant? Did anyone really care about Carl Durrell? Carl Durrell didn't really care to recruit. And again, guys, like we brought in guys like Ryan Staub, you know that. Probably, honestly, not as talented as Ryan Staub that we thought, hey, this guy could be the guy here, right? That's just how bad things were, okay? So, uh, see you. Like, we've seen plenty of guys like Ryan Staub come through the program over the last 13 years. Um, Case and Wiseman, all of that. And they've gotten their opportunity to play substantial, um, you know, substantial time. That's not going to happen here while Coach Prime is here. And maybe that's why it's just like, I just don't really care much if they're entering the portal and, and going somewhere else. Um, we'll see where Case and Wiseman goes again. I was impressed. Like, I was still happy with how Ryan Staub played. And I would be okay if he's the backup quarterback here this year. Um, but if he has the opportunity to go start at a G5 school this year, he should absolutely hop in the portal and do it. He should. Um, and I would like to see him do it because I want to see him play. And I just don't see him getting a long run here or a long leash. Someone may take a chance on smoke, possibly late in the sixth or seventh round. Possibly. I don't think so. Um, I think the only draft picks we have from this year's team are Xavier Weaver, Jordan Dominic, and maybe Roderick Ward. I think that's it. Um, I don't think Derek McLennan will be drafted. I don't think Cavassier Smoke will be drafted. I don't think Javon Antonio will be drafted. But those guys definitely could end up um, bouncing around on some practice squads for a while. And then who knows what happens. What happened to the kid from Georgia, the big QB? Where is he going? Uh, are we talking about Dylan Raiola? Raiola, he's on a visit to Nebraska this weekend. And, again, his uncle coaches at um, Nebraska. Offensive line coach got a 53% pay bump, uh, you know, for next year. So uh, I think he's going to be going there. We'll see where Kyle McCord goes, too. I think he's a good quarterback. Um, I, I think he'll start for a handful of different Power 5 teams out here if he were to go there. So, uh, yeah, we, we might see a Rayola versus a Shador matchup next year in Lincoln, which, you know, could be a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, uh, like Matt Rule, he seems to be doing a really good job with recruiting this year. Again, guys, like, yes, I hate Nebraska, but uh, I think Matt Rule is a good coach. And I think he's going to get that thing rebuilt. He's had success everywhere else he's been in college football. So 
I've always told Nebraska fans, if it doesn't work out with Matt Rule, it's because you guys are the problem, not because of Matt Rule. So I hope we continue that rivalry because uh, even in our down years, you know, when we've had those home and homes, you know, six, seven years ago, it's always been competitive because we've kind of been in the same spot talent wise. Um, and now we're kind of rebuilding uh, together as well. So I think it's I want them to be competitive. Um, of course, I want CU to always be better, but a rivalry is fun when both teams actually, you know, take some punches and give some punches. You know what I'm saying? A lot of respect for what Nebraska is doing. Yeah, I think it just answered that. Yeah. Uh, D Matt, again, any player that came here this past year, I'm going to love as a buff. But looking at it objectively, when Carter Stoutmeyer has more tackles than you had as a defensive end, uh, man, that's just tough. We come in. What's up, man? Good to see you. And, man, this chat is absolutely crazy. Oh, Antoine Hill. So, yeah, Antoine Hill's 2025. He was planning on reclassifying. A lot of people missed that, I think, in Adam Munster Tiger's article. Was it Adam's? He's planning to be here in 2024. So something changed with his decommit. Maybe he wants to stay for another year. That's how I'm guess. Uh, that's what I'm guessing with it. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, I don't know. Until I see somebody decommit here and then like recommit. Uh, I'm just going to look at it. If you've decommitted here, then we're probably just moving on to somebody else. It's kind of how I see it. Neckbone. I don't care about portal players when Stanford beat you three stars. It's a team thing. Something is up with chemistry and philosophy. <laughs> I get what you're saying, Neckbone, but it's also like not that black and white. <laughs> it, it's, it's not that black and white. We were kicking ass in that first half. and. Hey, man, uh, terrible game management, terrible play calling. Uh, we did not put players in positions to win, and mentally we just weren't there. Um, I put that game on coaching in leadership rather than if their team was made up of transfer portal guys or three stars that have been there three years. Uh, we got our ass kicked, and that falls on coaching for not having us ready in the second half. Um, absolutely. It – like nobody was talking about team chemistry when we went and beat TCU and Nebraska, uh, two teams that are better, in my opinion, than Stanford. Um, so I, I, I just think that whole thing's a little overrated, but I do get what you're saying. Like there is value to having guys in here. Uh, we can't be doing what we did this past year with having just a bunch of mercenaries come in one year, one and done, whatever. We need guys that have been in the program for years because then when you have that, then there's opportunities where you play above your mean. That was a game in which Stanford played above their mean. And I think it had to do with the fact that they knew each other, that they played together for a while, even though they had a freshman quarterback or maybe he's a redshirt freshman quarterback, but they played well, they played together. And guys, again, like you are freaking out about some of these losses in this first year. Let's not forget, Nick Saban's Alabama lost to, was it Louisiana Lafayette? <laughs> like, we didn't have a loss that bad. <laughs> okay. Um, it, yeah, it, it's inexcusable, but I'm will, I'm, I'm able to give somewhat of a pass for it in this first year. Okay. And the, um, <laughs> Sorry, I got to text my sister back. Um, and we're getting better players in the portal this year. No doubt, Neckbone. Um, look at, like, outside of Travis and Shador, those guys. Like, look at look at the guys that we brought in last year compared to this year, especially what you'll see on the offensive line front and the defensive front. We're better. I mean, just ask Florida State how the portal's going for them. Um, as much as they're the, the butt of my jokes right now, they – um, they've done really well. Uh, 
I wish we could get that receiver from Colorado State, Horton. Yes. I thought he was a tight end, too. Hold up real quick. Sorry, I got to text my sister. She needs my ESPN login. All right. Hey, Nicholas, good to see you, dude. As much as I love Chidozi, I think the number one target should be McClellan, then Chidozi, Preston Hodge, Mike Lockhart, Chris Brazell, Cordell Russell, Wiggins, in that order. Very interesting. Um, very interesting. Uh, is it just because McClellan's played at the, the SEC bigger size? Uh, that, that would make sense. Again, Ideally, you can get both of them and have them starting on the defensive line. That would be that would be awesome. Um, then we have a guy like Omar White that can come in there, a guy who's continuing to develop like Amari McNeil. Um, I like that. I like that. Hopefully, we can get the majority of the guys on this list outside of Lockhart. Looks like he is off to SMU. Now, I would prefer if we if I had to choose between Brazil or Cordell Russell. I'm going with Cordell Russell because he's got so much more eligibility left. But um, again, I think uh, Brazil would be uh, just one and done. Let's see. Man, you guys are cracking me up. What's up, Scope Off Staley? Good to see ya. Who else we got now, I mean, oh, man, are y'all trolling me? Oh, man, you guys are cracking me up. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I know, yeah, I know, Rahad, you're saying don't do it. Just. Uh... <laughs> man, you guys are cracking me up. I know y'all hate the fight song. Oh, man. Cordo Russell Locke, McClellan Locke. Let's hope so. Every returning player will have better draft stock than this. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, it's also going to help when we're winning more games too. Um, yeah. I don't like 40-40-20. Take a guy like Omarion Miller. He gets two guys in Michael and Draylon he has to compete against. Now, add Shepard, um, Timmons, and they're still looking. i transfer ASAP. Um, still think Omarion's better than most of those guys that you listed. So, um, I mean, I, I don't think so. Again, I want to be like Ohio State. I want to be like Alabama. Bring in all the dogs, and let's just see which ones earn their spots, earn those starting spots. It's, all y'all are too loyal to um, to give away starting time for a team that went four and eight this year. That's what I don't. <laughs> and y'all help me understand that. Like, I mean, I've watched this team lose for years and years and years, and it's like y'all are want, already wanting us to start stop. Um, recruiting at certain positions when, again, we won four games this past year. Um, we need to be better at every position. I, I, <laughs> this is just, all this stuff is just crazy to me. <laughs> Can y'all help me understand that? Like, we won four games and y'all are acting like we need to just leave certain positions alone. Help me understand that. Guys, I would love it if this team could be so uh, so talented to where we don't have to depend on freshmen to play any key role for us. 
Wouldn't that be wonderful? It's not ideal to ever have true freshmen out there playing key roles for you. <sighs> All right, no comment. <laughs> will J5 start or not? Uh, I think he should. Uh, I think he will start at slot. I do think he was um, affected by that hamstring for most of the year. But again, we're bringing in guys that, hey, if you're going to drop the easy ones. We got some dogs that we can really depend on coming in here now. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, I would love us to run some sets that just have our big-time wide receivers, our big dogs. Of course, Travis Hunter right there, right? Then we got um, somebody like Omari Miller out there. We got somebody like Will Shepard out there. We got somebody like um, – Timmons, was he 6'5", 6'3"? I forget, but just tall guys, man. Tall guys. Go up and win those 50-50 balls. And trucking, what's going on, man? Good to see you guys. I'm ready to buy my 77 jersey. Seton is a first-rounder. Absolutely. Man, you guys are ruthless. You guys are always traded Texas truth. All right, Dave, when we get another Willie Gaines situation, we don't want to hear it. Some of these guys will be disappointed. Yeah, I, again, I don't care. I like there are going to be guys that are disappointed. That happens at every school. All I'm asking is that you just don't get on and do a 20 minute Instagram live on how you feel. Like th the, the standard is incredibly low. Okay. That's all I'm asking. Man, you guys are cracking me up. <laughs> you guys are crazy. You guys are, man, you guys are cracking me up. Um, what's up? Uh, oh, Dev, I thought you said Dave. Uh, I'll take a couple more questions, and then I'll get out of here. J5 is a first-round pick in practice. Yeah, and uh, our, our defensive line looked like first round pick in practice, um, you know, all, all throughout these well off videos. And, and now we know why. Top shot, a good show, Dave. Hey, I appreciate it. Again, guys, um, you know, like I'm not asking you guys to agree with me. I think that I am in the minority on some of these opinions and takes that I have. But the fact that we can get on here, talk, conversate a little bit, you know, it's always really enjoyable. I'm hoping we get a guy like, um, Shadozi in here, the Wankwo. All right, Bodie, appreciate the super chat, man. David, Michael could be a major star in this team, possibly a starter. What do you think? Yes, um, made in the mold of somebody like Debo Samuel. If you've watched CU in the past, um, and guys, if you haven't, um, if this was the first year that you've kind of been following this team, please go back and look at LaVisca Chanel out of DeSoto. Same high school as Von Miller outside of Dallas. Go watch LaVisca Chenault here. Um, he played three years here, second-round draft pick uh, for the Jaguars. He's kind of hopped around a little bit, but he was made in the same mold of somebody like Debo Samuel, um, somebody like Cam Michael, who can play uh, that wildcat quarterback, that can play running back, that is a yards-after-the-catch kind of guy, a guy that once he catches it, he runs like a running back. Very talented receiver. Um, we didn't win a lot of games, obviously, when he was here, but like again, I think we had like three, five win seasons or something like that when he was here, but we don't win a lot of those games without him, without him making stellar performances and clutch plays like against Nebraska in 2018, 2019, um, you know, Katie Nixon, his teammate from DeSoto made a really big play off that flea flicker against Nebraska, which started the comeback in 2018. Um, but go and watch LaVisca Chenault. Um, I'm very excited for Michael. We don't have a ton of guys that kind of have that sort of yak profile that he has. Um, Jordan Onavue is a, is a guy that that's kind of like that too. So I, I'm interested to see how we use him because he's kind of made in a little bit different of a mold than what we've seen um, here at CU. So that's a great question, Bodie. I appreciate the super chat. All right. 
All right. Here we go. Fight, see you down the field. See you must win. Fight, fight for victory. See you knows no defeat will roll up a mighty score. Never give in. Shoulder to shoulder, we will fight, 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 fight. Fuck him up, fuck him up, go see you.